Okie doke. Uh, welcome to card number five, line numbers 500 through 510. And uh, this is specifically measuring amperage, which is current, amps, amperage, current. Um, in case you're interested, the fellow who uh, figured out the whole current flow thing, uh, his name was Andre Ampere. French dude. Um, was he Italian? No, he's. I think he's French. I don't know. At any rate, uh, the amp meter. I've, I've used it in the in the previous cards, um, and I'm trying to get you warmed up to it. Um, and uh, the biggest uh, thing about the amp meter you have to be aware of is that it's uh, it's a potentially tough meter to use. It's potentially kind of dangerous because um, the amp meter is a jumper wire, okay? And uh, as soon as you use the amp meter, as soon as you turn the amp meter on and as soon as you move the leads from here to here or here to here, um, you are going to be um, more likely to create a problem for yourself than if you were using the voltmeter or the ohm meter. Now the ohm meter uh, is not really dangerous, and uh, some people think it is, but it really isn't. The digital meters are not really that problematic. Um, it's only got three volts in it, so the, the ohm meter, the ohm meter can't really hurt as many things as people think it can. But no point in taking any chances, I guess. But the voltmeter is completely safe, uh, but the amp meter requires some thought. You can't just, as it says here, you can't just turn it on and go. You have to know where you are, what you're doing, you have to know why you're doing it, um, and you have to make sure that you're very careful to not put it someplace where it really shouldn't be because when it turns things on in my industry, it makes things work. So a large, for example, 400 ton coal truck, um, we can move dump doors, uh, we can make beds move, uh, we can do a lot of different things that can hurt people if they're in the wrong place at the wrong time and you're using the wrong meter without letting people know. So one of the cautions if you're working in the industry, if you're going to use the amp meter, uh, it, it really does require um, tag out, lock out, and uh, block and chalk. So be be careful. All right, now what I've got <coughs> is i got uh, the indications here. Notice that there are... Um, one, two, three, four, five places where you do not use the amp meter in this particular circuit, and one place where you do, okay? Because uh, it's a jumper wire, so what you want to do, in this case, you'll jump across the open switch. Jump across the open switch. So if you jump across the open switch, then you're going to turn the circuit on. So in this case, it's a coil. You jump across the switch, coil turns on. Down here, we're just going to turn on resistors. Now, um, one of the things I want to point out here real quick is that if you want to take these resistors out and change them, um, I just put the math here for you to see how to do it, those of you who are learning how to do the math. Um, but you can swap these out with other resistors. Now, I recommend you keep them fairly small. Don't, don't jump up into the 50K to 100K range because you don't get a lot of amperage and you don't get a lot of... Um, it's kind of hard to do, but if you're down in the 100 to 300 ohm range, you get some numbers you can actually um, work with. The other thing, too, is that the stuff that we work on in industry, the resistances are very, very low. So you would never see a 50,000 ohm resistor or resistance and have it be normal. 50,000 ohms would be broken. 50 ohms would be okay. So uh, don't get in the habit of expecting to see 22K or 330K or 1.5 meg. I mean, you're not going to see that in, in the world. You're not going to, in the world that I work in, you won't see that. So um, each of these is uh, 100 ohms. And what I did here um, was I put two 100s in parallel just to reinforce what we did in card four. Um, but two 100s in parallel will give you 50. So the first thing I'm going to do is um, I got my 
battery unplugged, which is, you know, that's not a bad thing to do with, uh, with the ohm meter. And um, I will turn the meter on ohms like that. Make sure you can see it. It's pretty clear. Okay. Um, now the circuits are open here. Okay. And so they're isolated. So this resistor is by itself and these two resistors are by themselves and these two, this resistor pair is by itself. So I don't have any problem using the ohm meter here. And that's one of the problems with the ohm meter is that people are not always sure that the circuit is isolated. Okay. So if you're working on vehicles or equipment, um, the ohm meter is not dangerous because it will hurt things. The ohm meter is dangerous because you may not get a right answer. So <clears throat> if you're trying to diagnose, you don't want to work with wrong answers. So if I did this right, <clears throat> I should read here and should read about 100 ohms. And I'm at 97.4. If I read here, I should read 100. If I read here, I should read 100, roughly, plus or minus. They're, they're averaging at about 97. But if I read here, I should read over to uh, about 200. So there's 195, 194, 90, yeah, 195. But here, because they're in parallel, twice as many paths, and both paths are equal. So it's the same thing as two, two holes drilled in a bucket. And both holes are the same size. So the flow through each will be the same, and the total flow will be double. So uh, here it is. I should get about 50. I get 48, 49. So these are the numbers I expect. Okay. Um, now, if I get 50 here and I get 200 here, if I read from here to here, I'm going to get 250. See, that's the wrong answer. Okay. And if I read from here to here, I'm going to get 300. And that's, that's the wrong answer. Okay. So you have to be very careful to make sure you're in the right place when you're reading resistance. And we've already covered some of that, but I want to just reinforce it. Okay, so what I should be able to do is flip the meter back to, um, I'll go to milliamps, and pull out the red lead and move the red lead over to milliamps and move the milliamps. Uh, the pure number of 12 volts over 100 ohms would be 0 0.120 amps. But let's use the number that the battery has been, and let's do 12.75 divided by 97.3, and let's see if Ohm's law works. Okay, so we have 12.75 volts of pressure pushing current through 97.3 ohms of restriction. So 12.75 divided by 97.3 equals 0.131. So that would be 131 milliamps. And let's see how close we are. 124.8, 125. So I calculated 131, I should have written that down, huh? 131 milliamps. But a couple of things are happening here. Okay, our number was actually lower. What was our number? 125? Okay, 125. So the lesson here, the cure, the, 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 the very important lesson is that something is making this number less, and it's either more of this or less of this. Okay, so I'm going to guess it's probably less voltage because the battery's you know probably getting a little weaker so I would guess that um, my numbers are uh, my voltage numbers are off a little bit but uh, let's see what we got here so we had uh, 12.75 volts divided by I believe it was 198 ohms so let's see what we get here. Clear, clear, clear. 12.75 divided by 198. About 0 .064. So we're expecting 64 milliamps. So I expect 64 milliamps, which, by the way, is 0 .064 amps. All right. 
that number and that number are the same number. So let's see what we get here. Well, that's a little closer, 63.6. .6. We calculated 64, so we get 63.6 .6 milliamps. So that number is, is pretty good. That's, that's a pretty good number there. All right. Um, okay, now, let me refresh your memory as to the calculation for the resistances here. Sorry. One zero zero inverse plus one zero zero inverse equals inverse, and we get 50. Okay, so there's where the 50 comes in. There you go. That's where the 50 comes in. All right, and if we do the math, uh, we'll do, uh, again, so you can see this here, we'll use 12.75 divided by, uh, 5 is 49, point zero two six. so that'd be 20, be 260, sorry, 260 milliamps. So let's see if we get roughly 260. Remember, polarity, don't, don't accept a negative number. We get 234, so we're off by a little bit. So we're a little bit off. So um, the 12.75 volts divided by the 49 ohms gave us 0.260 amps, and we're getting 0.234. Quick note here, you can't use... Um, you can't use milliamps in the calculation. You have to use amps. So you have to convert everything to amps. So you can't use 64. You'd have to use 0 .064. You couldn't use 131. You'd have to use 0 .131 in order to do the math. So don't if that if you're getting weird numbers, that might be the reason. Okay. Um, what I've done here is I've wired in a voltmeter so I can monitor my battery voltage. And a um, couple of things are happening here. Um, I want you to um, notice a couple of things as we as we read the as we read the amperage. Um, this one, as you saw, had the most or had the middle amount of current. This one had the least, and this one had the most because this is 100. 200 is more, so the current is less. 50 is less, so the current is more. Um, these are carbon-based resistors. And these carbon-based resistors, one of the interesting things about carbon, which is how a carbon pile works and which is how a carbon pile resistor works, the hotter they get, the resistance actually drops. Now, in copper wiring, if, if heat increases, then resistance increases. But with carbon, as heat increases, resistance decreases. And I'm not sure if they still teach that anymore, but I know they do. Or they did when I was going to school. So uh, let's let's do this again. Let's kind of analyze what's happening here. So um, oops. So uh, I'm turning on the first circuit we did. We get about 124.5, and notice the voltage is about 1270. Notice that the amperage is slightly going up. Okay. Well, I'm going to take an ice cube from my drink here. And notice I'm cooling off the current. I'm cooling off the resistor. I'm getting water all over the board. Notice when I cooled off the carbon, the current went down. That's because cold carbon has more resistance than hot carbon. So right now, if I take the soldering iron and heat up the carbon, Notice that the current goes up. Okay, so that's proving that in the case of a carbon-based resistance, the resistance of the carbon actually changes in the opposite direction as the resistance of um, copper. So this is an experiment you can do, and you can actually watch the resistance change. This is fundamentally how a thermocouple works. Okay, so a thermocouple as the carbon 
changes uh, temperature, the resistance changes, and that's what gives you the different reading. So if we go here, the same thing should apply. Notice as the current starts flowing, current produces heat, and the current starts going up slightly. It's one of the reasons you have to let things warm up. But now if I heat this, my current should go up. All right, okay. Now let me take my ice cube. Making a mess here, but it's worth it for education. And if I cool it, the current actually goes down. So what we're doing is we're proving that carbon changes resistance in the opposite direction that you would expect, but that's how carbon-based thermistors and other types of sensors work. Because as the temperature of the device changes, temperature sensor, then the resistance changes, and as the resistance changes, that then goes, um, that then changes the signal going to the computer or to the gauge. All right, now in this case, you'll notice that the voltage dropped a little bit. And in this case, it dropped even slower, right? But watch how fast it drops here. All right, let's do that again. Let's let it recover. So it's at 1272. I'll go to the low, the, the lowest current first. Ding, ding, okay. Now I'll go to the next current, next lowest current, and it goes pretty good. But watch here with the highest current. Look at the voltage change. Okay. Well, the reason is, is that the higher the current flow, the more of a strain it puts on the battery. And the more of a strain it puts on the battery, the more the voltage will drop. And that's, what's, that's, that's the effect of putting a huge load on an alternator on a battery. Okay, so um, this, is, this is a pretty straightforward card. It doesn't take an awful lot. I've kind of set you up for it. But I really want you to practice. I want you to practice on this, change some resistors, um, and, and try to do the calculations here. If you have any problems, then you know, let me know, but it's, it's a pretty straightforward thing. Um, and uh, it's important to know how the amp meter works and what it does. Okay.